TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. This is a warning. I do not glorify, sensationalize, or condone any of the act stories told. I'm here simply to educate myself and others on the stories and the current state of issues around the world. Adult dialogue, strong language, viewer discretion advised. Don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind. Link down in the description, man. We're doing some good stuff. If you're looking for any of my old videos, they're over here on Facebook. Link also in the description. Essex Gangster gave £328,000 to an undercover police. Frank, Frank, Frank. Oh, this is... Okay, what does this say? This is, this is by... Um, the Taboo Room, too. It's a new channel I found, man. Go sub up, man. You, hey, you be dropping some good stuff. Uh, struggling to make ends meet with children to feed. Frank made a decision that he will regret for the rest of his life going on the run. And, okay. See you on the airplane. Some woman there, and I'm all the way there telling him to, the airplane's landed and everyone stood up. Six, nice town. It's a good well, I'm from Epping, which is a little town at the end of Central Line in Essex. Nice town. You know, I was brought up in a council house down a lot of road, but you know, people I think they've bought their houses now. It's probably not a council house oh, road now. Right. Like a football pitch down the bottom, fields as far as your eye can see. My parents split up when I was younger, but nothing traumatic. You know, everyone I went to school with and everyone in my little circle and I was younger parents weren't together. So yeah, it wasn't bad, you know, I just played football until the street lights come on and then over the forests. Um, what was your education like growing up? Left school with no GCSEs though, messed around, you know, no one to blame but me, just, just messed around and just was a hyperactive, like energy kid. Like, oh, at least he held himself accountable, okay. It's PE and drama and things like that, but never, when it comes to uh, English, maths and things like that, I was just, I think the maths teacher used to step in and he'd go out. So uh, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't a, an angel, I don't think. How did you get into the world of drugs then, Frank? I was scaffolding and earning really, not, it wasn't rubbish money, it was like 60 pound a day. But rubbish. I had mortgage and bills, I had to travel into London, I just couldn't afford to live. So I, I, I wasn't involved in drugs for a few years. And then I still remember to this day, I was in Tesco's buying the Tesco like blue stripe food. I think I spent like 30 quid. Oh. Tesco blue stripe food? What is like, is that like the food like specific for Tesco? <coughs> like Tesco brand? Is Tesco a grocery store, right? Okay. Filled a whole trolley up, walking out of Tesco's. And uh, I remember thinking, I still remember it thinking, I'm fed up with this. I was jumping the train to go to work, like pushing for people through the barriers. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna get back into getting involved in drugs. So I started doing the low level stuff again. And I didn't drink, didn't smoke, I was reliable. I went to work, done a few like things in the drugs world. And then I've got a phone call from someone higher up the train, you wanna? do like bigger drops for money and for bigger bits. Never, never told how much or anything. It was just like, pick a bag up, do this. And I said, yeah, fair enough. Obviously asked how much money it was. And he said, uh, and told me how much it was. It was more than what I was earning scaffold. It was like a week, it was more what I was earning scaffolding. But sorry, in between me having my daughter and me getting that job, I split up with their mum. Like the relationship broke down. He just different views, parted company. And then, uh, so I got involved in this, um, delivering drugs and things like that. And I think after, so when was that? Probably around 2007, my daughter was born. It was about early 2008. And then 2009, I got arrested for a conspiracy oh, yeah. to class A. Eh? So talk me through the, the whole case or the whole, the whole situation yeah. um, prior to you getting caught. I was told. And that's the worst part, so you, so basically you was trying to, you know, get some extra money, make a better life for yourself. You was tired. So you get, you went to what you knew. 
And then you had a daughter, the relationship broke down with a mother, and you went to jail two years after you had a daughter. That sucks. I've been watching a lot of these lately, and they always go to jail, like, right after they have their daughter, the kid. Something big's come, like, stay around. Don't do anything. It's all, you're all told, you, you, you know, you're not sitting in these, like, people think you're sitting in restaurants, like, something out of a fucking film. You just get given a phone, you get told by someone on the end of the phone, be here, be there. And, um... So I was told, stay around, don't do much, just chill out, there's something coming up, but we need you ready. And I was doing it most days anyway, but this one seemed to just had a bit more of a, a bit more of a seriousness about it. And then uh, I was told, right, go and pick some money up in Morphin Abbey. Uh, not in Morphin Abbey, sorry, go and pick some money up in Faden Boys, you're going up the road, you're going up north. So fuel your car, them sort of things. Not told, but like you sort of give, that, give them the heads up so you know what to do. And I, I walked in the CAF. This is before I was in the observation, obviously. I walked into a CAF and it was like a bakery, Fane and Boys, and the woman behind the counter said, like, I walked in, there was just me and a bloke sitting in the window. She said, does anybody want anything else? But I was walking out, so I was taking my food away and I thought, this feels strange. So she's implying, she didn't know me, didn't know I was, what I was doing. She's implying that someone's been sitting there ages. So I've walked out and just being paranoid because I've been in that world. I've sort of looked in his cup and I thought, it's like coffee, like a scummy coffee ring there. And then I quickly looked him up and down. He had like a square, I, can't, I, I say a camera bag, but do you remember the old fashioned cam called? It's like a square heavy bag, but like a, sort of outdoor-y one, not rucksack. And then he's dressed for all weathers and I've looked him up really quickly, but this is as I'm walking past and I see in his ear, there was like a little a skin earpiece, like a skin coloured earpiece. I thought, oh fuck. Okay, now you, 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 it sounded like you got it before, you knew what was going on before it happened. So why did you continue on? So I've gone around the corner, picked the bags up, I said to the bloke who's put the bags in my boot, he said, uh, I said to him, there's a bloke in the calf place. He said, don't worry for that, we're going miles away. So I didn't think nothing of it. As we're driving off, the guy's put an orange, like, outdoor jacket on, he's walking past, like, the pond bit. So he's, he's not followed me to, he's just around that. Nah, bro. At that point, I would've, uh-uh, ixnay, ixnay. No, sir. <laughs> Mission abort. <laughs> You've seen the skin-colored earpiece. You know what this is. Mm -mm. That place, I that's a bit weird. Drove all the way out to Pontefract Castle. Uh, I parked in a car park and the people have gone to go and talk to these other drug dealers. And then um, I've been called over and I've just got over, literally got out, put the uh, bags in the car. And the people, like the northerners that they met from up north, they were swearing and talking like that. It just didn't seem right. Do you know you think? Not like... They was trying too hard. That's what undercover cops do. They try too hard to fit in. <laughs> not saying I've been on loads and loads, like done loads of stuff, but I've been on enough like meets. I drove and met northerners and stuff, and, you know, I drove around England doing it. To think that something came right here and what I saw early in the day. Anyway, so where I'm... Um, I just second guess myself and I just thought, you know, don't worry about it. I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. So just thought. Hell no, no, sir. You gotta listen to your heart. <laughs> well, if you would have listened to your heart and your mind and your conscience and everything, you ain't even gotta listen to your heart. You seeing it with your eyes. You're seeing it unfold in front of you. Oh, I'll leave it at that. Driving back, pulled in a petrol station. The, the, the bloke I followed up there, pulled in after me and said, what are you doing? I said, just get some petrol. He said, I'll get a drink. As I've got out of the car to put petrol in, looked up, a white van's pulled out and the guy from Faden Boys earlier that day, now I'm in Leeds, you're talking hundreds of miles, three hour drive. He's got out of the van and we've locked eyes and he's like, looked at me and thought, fuck. And I've looked at him and thought, shit. And I've quickly gone in the uh, petrol station to go and see the bloke I followed. And I just said, that's the bloke that I told you earlier. And he's like, fuck, get away from me. So I've quickly run in the toilet, not, not knowing. You see how he did you? Hey, get away from me, bro. You had the stuff, not me.
I didn't have a clue what to do, really. So I run in the toilet and I'm sitting there thinking, shit, what do I do? I can't sit in here all day. And then I've noticed above the toilet, the window's there. And I thought to myself, oh, that's facing the exit. So I've jumped up and I stand on the toilet looking out the window. That's, uh, cars drove off and the vans followed that car. I thought, right, good. So I've gone down, gone and put some petrol in. And then uh, got to my car, you know, drove home thinking, shit, shit, shit. When I got back home, got my phone and rung a, the, the bloke that normally rings me and he said oh you, you must be imagining it I'm like really bro come on they're playing you oh, I said I'm not like I'm not like the sharpest in the I, I know when I see a bloke's face and I saw him again my, so anyway didn't think nothing of it and then months later after a few weird things happening I got arrested they're building the case on you <laughs> arrested for conspiracy supply class A and money laundering and it was an undercover sting. So the people they met in the car park was soccer, serious organ, they national crime agency now. And it was for 299 kilos of cocaine. I, I, knew, I, knew, the money, I knew the money that was around all this was good money, like a lot of money, but I didn't realize it was that. But I'm not sitting here making people feel sorry for me. Like this is the shit that happens when you get involved in crime. So what was you exactly dropping off that day? Money, 328 grand it was. In the... I understand getting out the sharpest <laughs> tool and the instrument, but you just said you dropped 328 grand and you didn't know it was that type of money, but you knew it was serious money. Yes, you did. You knew, you, you knew the amount. Did you, now, okay, do you know this amount as you dropped it or did you find that out later? I dropped the bags off with boxes in and then, yeah, I, I saw the, I, this is what I saw in my case. It was 328 grand, it was a part payment or something for the delivery of the drugs. And also you, you knew all of that information. You said a few strange things were happening. Um, yeah, there was a weird thing where I got followed, whether I got followed or not, I got, there was a helicopter behind me from Harlow to Wolfen Abbey when I was dropping my kids off. It used to happen on a Wednesday night and this happened like, after I'd done that, after I'd done that thing with dropping the money off, I sort of knew I fucked up, really. And I was, I was trying to be blind to it all. I was trying to, you know, oh, I'm making loads of money, forget about, you know, what you're doing is fucking bad. You just think I'm making money. Don't want to be bloody skinny anymore. Nah, and then um, I, w I used to take my kids out on a Wednesday. And a Wednesday after, I remember taking my kids out and I remember being at High Beach and it was summer setting. My kids were in their pajamas because I used to take them out for an hour or two after like before bedtime and I was sitting there and I started crying looking at my daughter and I thought fuck and she's come over and what's on your face? I was like nothing. I said it was hay fever or something because I knew deep down I fucked up. Like massively fucked up trying to be, you know, getting involved with these fucking idiots. I, I knew what I was doing, committing crime and getting involved and all that. But The thing about it is you, you've seen every tale, tall tale sign you had the opportunity and you was, oh, I'm just gonna ignore it. That, that right at there is wild. <laughs> if I see a skin colored earpiece in anybody's ear, I'm not participating in anything else. <laughs> well, this ain't no, this ain't no festival. Like what you got an earpiece in for? No, I'm done. <laughs> Y'all do it. Uh, but not really, maybe being oblivious. I wasn't surrounded by a crime and criminals when I was younger. I watched ah, films, but maybe... Okay. You jumped in this as a, as a grown man. <laughs> Not as a youngin. So you, 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 your, your undercover cop senses was not honed. <laughs> as honed as they should be. But you still seen it, though oblivious to what would really happen. And then uh, my, so about a week later or two, I'm driving my kids back to their house in Wolfen Abbey and there's like a helicopter behind me and I'm thinking, oh, you know, is that, what is that? What's that to do And I'm thinking, I'm just some fucking little idiot from Epping. I'm not, they're not gonna be looking out for me. And then got to my kid's house in Wolfen Abbey and the helicopter you stopped above the house. Half a million dollars in the parking, <laughs> they're on you. All police come in the um, road. And I've looked and I've stepped away from my kid's house and their mum at the time looked to me to say like, that's, that's for you, isn't it, you fucking idiot? And I was like, I don't know. I've stepped away thinking I don't want to get 
not thinking it, but probably unconsciously thinking it. I didn't want to get like resting in front of the kids. And then I've asked a policeman, oh, all right, anything I can help with? And he's like, someone was shouted at him something. And he was like, oh, uh, 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 what? oh, no, 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 we're looking for someone covered in blood. I thought, fair enough. Later on, like years later, after I got arrested, I um, found out it was, it was the day, it was a Wednesday night. I don't know whether exact, but it was a Wednesday night. I used to get my kids around seven o'clock-ish. The drug was meant to be picked up and someone called it off, said something came right here. They called off the drug picking up and then it got picked up like a week later. So maybe that was my time or it wasn't. But then I, when I found out the drugs were picked up and the police have intercepted the van. So the bloke started a van and drove off in the fucking van and the immobiliser didn't work. So they're back to jackknife a lorry and fricking pull this bloke over from the motorway. Because if he got away with that, because the drugs were in the van, the police would have been. Imagine how bad that would have looked. So, um... Boy, you got a stroke of luck. They thought you were supposed to do a drop and you wasn't doing a drop and you had your kids and they was, uh, 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 uh. They messed it up. Okay. Hey, God was on your side a lot. <laughs> on that day at least. I, I've gone on the run with a bit of money that I had. I was, went around England, done a few things. I went down Cornwall for a little while, thinking I'd be a beach bum or something there. And then, but I didn't realise how many young kids are in Cornwall, no key, like young people. The police was like stopping people, just searching them, like overnight. So I, I ended up going, I went up to like Ashford way to get to Ireland. And then from Ireland, I ended up in Thailand and then stayed there for a little while. And why is in Thailand, Thailand, I guess, being on the run? How, how anxious or how did you feel? I hated it. I hope you was being careful in Thailand. People, like people, do you know when you're talking amongst people and people don't know, like what I, I was in prison or something, they talk about Thailand and I forget myself, oh, I've been there. Oh, ain't it lovely, blah, blah. And I was think, fuck, I fucking hated it. It's away from my kids. I never spoke to my family. I'm not that, I could have rung them and things, but I didn't want to, like I've put them through enough already. Oh, I didn't want like the police to turn up and raid their oh, house or something. And they've got a lie. Like imagine like my mum sitting there and she's got a lie to the fucking police. It's like scummy really. So I was in Thailand for a little while and I'd hated it. Hated it. I, I, not that I hated it, it's a nice place, but I just was sitting there thinking, I, I, I'd rather be in prison than sitting out here on my own, just like waiting. And then a friend of mine, I used to give him cash. He didn't have a clue what I was doing. I'd give him cash and he rented a car for me. And I just said like, you know, I've got, I've, I've got, I'm earning cash or something, doing a cash job. And he said, yeah, fine. And then he got raided by the police and he's a nice bloke. It's like properly raided, kicked the door in and everything. And uh, I thought then, like, my time's up, so I rung, the kids, to speak to the kids, just say hello, and the kids are all excited, and I never really spoke to their mum, but I, I, their mum come on the phone to tell me that happened, and I said, I've had enough, I wanna come home. And she said, I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna, what does it say, I don't wanna convince, you know, like make you do something you don't wanna do, but she said, Louis, my son, the eldest son, Louis, um, was looking out the window, cause my daughter's only a baby, and uh, he said, where's my dad gone? Like, Dad. What's happened to my dad and even to staff? That broke your heart, didn't it, my boy? That would break my heart. That's crazy. I'm t every time in these stories when they got kids, kids will do it. Kids will bring you back home. Kids will make you straight nuts. For fuck's sake. We were like inseparable when he was younger. So I come home and then I got arrested. Didn't even get out of my seat on the airplane. They said the airplane's landed and everyone stood up talking to some like Australian kid all the way there telling him to do this, do that, having a laugh, like nice bloke. Some woman there and I'm going, well, turbulence, well, that was, that was a big one. She's like, yeah, arm police come on. Are you Frank Steadman? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you're nicked and fucking put a gun in my head. The whole plane started fucking screaming. I'm like, shit. And I knew... You're on the plane. Why would they put, a, why would they put that to your head like that? Like you was going, <laughs> like you had something or something like that, okay. I knew it was bad. I, by that time, I didn't know how bad. I knew I was going to get arrested and I knew it might end up in prison, but it's still like a glimmer of hope of something because I found out later on, the, the, the soccer agent, I shook his hand at the end of the night because I found out later on because they took me out of a side door. 
the airport police wanted to take me out the front and I said, I think my kids are outside because I think they was coming up to pick me up with my mum and that. And um, the soccer bloke said, no, we'll take me out of the side door and the airport police didn't like it. And I found out later on through my barrister, my kids were outside. So the, the soccer agent, I, shook, I know he arrested me, but I just shook his hand and said, thanks for that because that's traumatising for your kids. Yeah, Imagine coming out scary. with armed police. Like, my kid, I'd have to, I don't know, I don't know what I would have said. Yeah, and then I uh, got remanded in custody. I was on remand for like 10 months, but a month in, I was in Wormwood Scrubs, a month into my sentence, my brother died wow. through um, suicide. And um, he, I, so I, I looked in to go to the funeral and then secu like security look into letting you go. And then I, I was in my cell and there was like, security come to my door and I thought, oh, what's this? And they let me go and um, telling me what to do, sort of thing. My family's brought the suit up and all that. And um, they said, like, get to the back of your cell and all that. Put your arms behind your back. And I think, what the fuck? I've only been in a month. And I think, what have I done? Thinking I've done something in prison where well, I hadn't. And uh, they took me into segregation and they said they're looking into Cat A it makes. When they investigated to let me go to the funeral, they said, um, like, the funds, the, the amount of drugs that were involved and the money was involved, I had funds to break out or the means to. And I'm like, they're saying Cat A, then I'm like, what the fuck is this? I didn't have a clue. And then I got put in segregation for like 10 days over my birth. Like, so my brother died in 31st of July. My birthday is the 10th of August. And then his funeral was like the 14th. And then um, I got um, put in segregation. I was in segregation over that time. And then I'm asking every day, like, what's going on? And then they was going, oh, we're not sure. We're waiting for the home office to come back. So I understand now, like later on going through my sentence that, they're probably just trying to keep my call because they knew I weren't gonna hurt. So yeah, I got made cat A, got sent to Belmarsh and I wasn't allowed to go to my brother's funeral. But these are the, Dang. it sounds mad, these are the things. You got put in cat A because you were a flight risk? And you, obviously they wouldn't let you go because they thought you was gonna escape or something? That happen if you commit crime. It's not all Instagram on fucking Range Rovers. If you commit crime, this is what, you know, these young kids are looking up to these dicks doing videos, but it, this is what really happens, you know. I didn't go to my brother's funeral. My first time I seen my daughter walk and talk was in a visit in Belmarsh. First time my son read to me was in a visit in Loudon Grange. It's just them like scummy things that it's made me who I am today. You know, I could have been, I could have stayed in that drugs world and I would, might have ended up an absolute dick. Well, I might be a dick, I don't know. Might have ended up an absolute fucking wrong one. But, you know, I just, the things that happen from you committing crime, it just like, you don't realise it's going to happen until it happens. And it just, it, it's a shit time it was. It's segregation, dealing with my uh, brother's thing. That was, a, that was a hard time. I wanted to be out there, maybe to be there with my family, I don't know. But yeah, and then I wasn't had to go. That was it. You know, the craziest part of the story is this could have all been prevented if you would have just listened to your heart. If you would have just listened to that little voice, if you would have just took into account all of the signs and the signals that the, that, that the atmosphere was giving you, you could have got up out of there. Skin colored earpiece. The officers talking like too much, like trying to fit in too hard. By that point, it was too late though. When the officers were doing all that hoobly blah blah blah, it was too late. But I'm glad you're on the reformed path now, man. Tell anybody like comment. I'm good. <laughs>